Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Lecture number 14. This lecture is dedicated totally on the modernizing processes for natural dyeing. Moderns, we have been talking about moderns for quite some time, but let us now look at it in little more detail. The word modern comes from the French word mord, and moderns can be described as metal salts with affinity for both fiber and dye stuff and that it improves the color fastness. Even some of the fugitive dyes that have been used with the help of the moderns very successfully. Dyes are categorized as either moderns or adjective or indirect dyes. Most of the natural dyes are modern dyes expect excepting for a few direct dyes and vat dye like indigo. The latter dye needs no moderns and that is why I said sometimes you know the excess of dye runs off or leaves off because mordant holds up these dye molecules. What is meant by that statement? It means that mordants have the capability to attach to both the dye stuff and the fiber or the fabric and therefore, they are called as ad adjective dyes or indirect dyes which use the mordant. Other dyes which do not use are dyed with or without the use of mordant are called direct dyes. Metal vessels can affect the color of the extract. In addition to adding substances to a bath for mordanting, the vessel that is used may itself serve as a mordant. And I gave you an example that when I was doing dyeing at Gorakhpur in a very old dye house, their dyeing machine, jigger dyeing machine was made up of wrought iron and that iron had rotted further. As a result, the fresh iron was available for mordanting and that spoiled the whole dyeing of that entire lot of fabric. So, using a tin pot or an iron pot could change the color of the extract. And so, the same thing is now to be understood more specifically that this metal vessel will also start contributing its color because some of it will leach into the dye extract. So, the dyers use copper vessel or copper tin vessel to brighten the color and iron vat to dull the color. To get the effect of alum modern, nowadays aluminum dye pot with a little soda is used. But nowadays with technological advancement, nobody is using these old age uh, techniques. People are going in for recipes which are very well defined and this kind of arbitration or suppositions are not taken into account. To get this basic original color of the coloring matter, earthen or stainless steel materials are advised. Why? Because they will not leach any metal into the dye extract. Mordanting of cotton, now that is most important. We just now studied about the pretreatment or the modifiers. Why? Because cotton is one of the toughest to dye with natural dye and it is extra, you know, in a time and energy and effort has to be made for preparing cotton for 
natural dyeing. Mordanting is very important for cotton dyeing because cotton as I told you is not easy to dye. Cotton does not have dye adhering functional groups on the surface of the fabric. As a result, it has to be activated the, by the tannin treatment. Tannic acid treatment does surface activation of cotton and then further on mordanting is also important. So, mordanting is very important for cotton dyeing. Cotton natural dyeing of cotton is more difficult than silk and wool as what I said a while ago. Cotton is not very porous and will not hold the dye stuff without a more complicated preparation for mordanting the fiber must be cleaned first. And that is why we learnt how the fiber is cleaned by starting from singeing to desizing to scouring to bleaching to mercerization etcetera. So, the first thing is that all the grease and the other material such as waxes of the cotton must be removed by scouring and it is not a very porous material. Therefore, you know special preparation of the cotton needs to be done, cotton needs a tannic acid treatment. So, that when that happens the cotton which is scoured or washed with mild alkali and alkaline solution. The next step is the pretreatment with tannic acid and the third treatment in the step is the mordanting process. Why mordanting is required? Time and again I am talking and emphasizing because it is important to understand that synthetic dyeing is different and natural dyeing is quite different. And there we have to do all these pretreatments in order for the natural colorant to nicely adhere to the fabric. Mordanting is a crucial step in the natural dyeing process, especially when working with cotton and other plant based fibers. Mordants are substances that help in binding the natural dyes to the fabric, improving color fastness and enhancing the brilliance of the colors. Here is a general guide on mordanting cotton before natural dyeing. Material needed is cotton fabric or yarn. Ensure that it is clean and pre-washed to remove any impurities or finishes. Then it is treated with tannic acid. And third step is the mordanting. Common mordants that are used are alum, iron, tin, copper, chromium or tannic rich substances. But as I told and I have been repeatedly telling that copper and chromium are used only when a desired color is required not otherwise. It is not of common practice. Metal mordants can be defined as polyvalent metal ions which forms coordination complexes with certain dyes. Now, we are trying to get into the chemistry. The metal transition metal particularly as you would recall have many oxidation state and therefore, it is called polyvalent metal ion and it has the capacity to coordinate with several positions of the dye. Two types of bonds are formed in the fundamental reaction between a modern dye and a uh, between a modern dye and a modern. One is covalent bond with us which usually occurs with hydroxyl oxygen and the metal atom and the other is a coordinate band bond with the metal with double bonded oxygen also referred as chelation. It is possible however, that formation of the dye mordant complexes involving several molecules of dye can also form. So, it is a very 
nice arrangement. Now, here you will see that chelation with aluminum, how beautifully the OH and the carboxylic acid are at ortho position rightly oriented to form a six membered ring and this is what I am referring to that between oxygen and aluminum on the left hand side is a covalent bond whereas, the carboxylic oxygen and the aluminum is forming a coordinate bond. Similarly, when we look at the chelation of the curcumin dye, you see two molecules can come together with any bivalent metal ion and this is how they form the six membered, six membered rings and this is very stable. One oxygen is forming a coordinate bond, the other oxygen is forming a covalent bond with the metal and two of these molecules are attached to one metal. Special use of cream of tartar, cream of tartar used with alum to brighten the colors and improve light fastness and we saw that in the previous lecture. However, even without the use of cream of tartar, alum can be used for mordanting. But if we use it, it makes it better, more lustrous, the color is more intensified, there is better light fastness and so on. Large stainless steel or enamel pot are used, non-reactive pots are preferred to avoid unwanted reaction with mordants. Heat source, a stove top or another, any other heating source for simmering by in the traditional dyeing vessels is also possible. Steps used in mordanting. First, the fabric has to be prepared and this we have learnt. Wash the cotton fabric or yarn thoroughly to remove any sizing, dirt or impurities. If working with cotton, scour it to remove natural oils and waxes. Use a mild detergent or soda ash for scouring. These are very standard procedures, but they have to be carried out. Choose a mordant. Alum is a common and safe mordant for cotton. It provides bright colors. Other mordants like iron darken the color, while copper can shift them towards more green. Calculating the mordant amount. People have been using as high as 10 to 15 percent of alum by for the weight of fabric, but that is not required. Only a very small amount, 2 percent itself is quite enough. So, what we have practiced is that we use 2 percent of alum, 1 percent of iron, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 percent for copper sulphate and uh, potassium dichromate and that suffices the mordanting uh, demand. However, now the trend is to use less mordant due to effluent waste management issues. Preparing the mordant solution, dissolve the desired amount of mordant in hot water, use enough water to completely submerge the fabric. If using alum, you can add cream of tartar to the solution to improve the color and light fastnesses. The cream of tartar is generally used in a ratio of 1 is to 2 with alum. Submerge the fabric in modern bath. Immerse the clean fabric or yarn in the modern solution. Ensure that the fabric is fully submerged and that the modern solution penetrates evenly because if it is popping out or if it is not completely submerged, the mordant would not evenly get distributed on the fabric. Simmer and soak. Heat the mordant bath to a simmering, not boiling and maintain it for about 1 or 2 hours, stirring it occasionally to ensure even mordanting. At every stage, we have to take care that 
it is stirred properly for the sake of getting evenness. Let the fabric or yarn soak in the modern bath for an additional 12 to 14 hours, but even that is not required. In current times, we use it for 1 or 2 hours, allowing the modern to thoroughly bind to the fabric. However, it is left for 1 or 2 hours only in the current times. Now, the, there is a readiness of starting the natural dyeing process. After rinsing and drying, removing the fabric and yarn from the modern bath and rinsing it thoroughly in cold water to remove the excess mordant, allowing the mordanted material to air dry. I will stop for a minute here to tell you that mordanting if possible should be done immediately before the dyeing process. If that is not possible, then the mordanted fabric which are dried must be kept under safety uh, in a cool dark place in a polythene bag, so that their effectivity remains. Natural dyeing, once mordanted, the fabric or the yarn is ready for natural dyeing. Follow the specific dyeing process for your chosen natural dye, considering factors like dye extraction, temperature and duration of dye. By following these steps, one can effectively modern cotton before natural dyeing ensuring better color adherence and longevity. Adjustment can be made based on specific mordant and dye you are using. Use of different mordants. There are different mordants that can be used. Preparation of alum mordant. To prepare alum mordant, first alum powder and cream of tartar are mixed in the ratio of 1 is to 2 with little boiling water and then made up for the remaining solution. The soak prepared alum solution is along with cream of tartar as a modifier is then used for uh, dyeing or oh sorry mordanting and this is now ready for mordanting. Tin mordant dissolving cream of tartar or oxalic acid in little quantity of hot water and then to that addition of stannous chloride and mixing it can make it a tin mordant solution. Copper mordant dissolve copper sulphate in lukewarm water and then you can make just make it up with some more of quantity of water and that would make copper mordanting solution. Chrome mordant, mordanting with potassium dichromate is just before dyeing, dissolving the potassium dichromate in little warm water and making a, up the solution and then now the chrome mordant solution is ready. Iron mordant can be applied directly, dissolving ferrous sulphate with little warm water and adding a little bit of cream of tartar mixed at a good combination for the mordanting process. So, for alum mordant, tin mordant, iron mordant along with the mordant, the ferrous sulphate, uh, aluminum sulphate, there is an additional mordant called cream of tartar which is also added. Whereas, in the case of copper and chrome mordant, you saw that they were directly prepared and cream of tartar was not added in the aqueous solution of the mordanting solution. Benefits of mordanting, we have seen this uh, even in the previous few lectures, but since this is a lecture totally dedicated to mordanting process, we are trying to bring in these points once again, so that it will be clear to you. Mordanting in natural dyeing offers several benefit that enhances the overall quality or and longevity of the dyed fabric. The key advantages of mordanting are color fastness. Mordants help bind natural dyes to fibers, improving color fastness. 
This means that the color are less likely to fade or wash out over time providing a longer lasting and more vibrant results. Color enhancement, mordants can influence the color outcome of the dye. Different mordants can shift the shade or intensify the color allowing for a broader range of hues and tones. For example, iron mordant can darken color while alum can brighten them. So, with alum we can get brighter shades, with iron we can get a little dull shade depending on what we want. There are more benefits for using mordants. It improves the penetration of the dye. So, improved penetration, mordants open up the fibers of the fabric allowing better penetration of the dye molecules. This results in more even and thorough coloration throughout the material. It also alters the color properties. Moderns can alter the pH of the dye bath influencing the final color. For instance, adding a mordant like alum with cream of tartar can create a more acidic environment enhancing certain dye colors. Adhesion to fibers, moderns for chemical bonds with both the dye and the fibers. So, as I told you they act as a bridging head between the fiber and the dye ensuring that the color adheres well to the fabric. This bond contributes to the stability of the dyed material. Moderns prevent uneven dyeing. They have a versatility for fiber types. Moderns can be tailored to different types of fibers. While alum is commonly used for plant based fibers like cotton, hemp, linen, other moderns may be more suitable for protein based fibers like wool and silk. Like fastness, moderns can contribute to improved light fastness in reducing the fading of color when exposed to sunlight. Remember we did a lecture where we were talking about the fading process due to photo degradation by the UV light. So, that is what is called light fastness. If the dye can sustain the UV light and absorb it and not get affected, then that dyed fabric is supposed to be having good light fastness. This is particularly important for textiles and garments that will be used or displayed outdoor because outside there is lot of sunlight and sunlight has UV light. Preventing uneven dyeing, moderns help prevent uneven dyeing by ensuring that the dye is absorbed uniformly by the fabric. This is crucial for achieving consistent and aesthetically pleasing results. They also are beneficial for improving the wash fastness. Mordanting enhances wash fastness of natural dyes, reducing the likelihood of color bleeding or fraying during washing. Dye accessibility. Moderns can make certain dyes more accessible to the fibers. Some natural dyes require moderns to create a stable and lasting bond with the fabric. While mordanting is a beneficial step in natural dyeing, it is essential to use mordants very carefully, considering the type of fiber and the desired outcome in the naturally dyed fabric. Different mordants can yield different effects and experimentation can lead to unique and interesting results. I will show you this graph which shows that when a dye is used 
when there is no dye, when there is only tannic acid and when there is tannic acid and alum, how the dye uptake is getting affecting the fiber, whether a mordant is truly participating or not can be understood by testing their effect of mordanting. A study by, was carried out to see the effect of mordant on the dye uptake and enhancement of the fastness property. The figure in the next which is on the right hand side shows that the tannic acid there is a blank that means we have just dipped the fabric and it shows a curve. I have just taken the dye solution and taken the reading and then a fabric which was only treated with tannic acid was dipped in the same dye solution and when it was tannic acid as well as alum treated the dye uptake was maximum which shows the least curve because all the dye has been picked up by the fabric and this is the dye content in the dye bath which is being shown. So, the concentration of dye bath when no fabric was added was 3.38 approximately. When an untreated fabric was immersed into it it took up some dye and it reduced the dye bath solution concentration to 2.4. When the fabric was treated with tannic acid and dipped in the same bath, it picked up dye and the concentration in the dye bath became 1.5 from 3.38, almost it became even less than half. And when tannic acid and alum were treated one by one on the cotton fabric and dipped into the same dye bath. It picked up even more dye than just the tannic acid and it was close to 1.2 which shows that both tannic acid and alum have assisted in better dye uptake by the fabric and this is a good example to show that they are very effective and mordanting is very important step in cotton natural dyeing. However, there are some drawbacks of mordanting. Every good thing cannot be always good, but we can prevent them. While mordanting is a valuable technique in natural dyeing, it is essential to be aware of potential drawbacks and considerations associated with the process. Here are some of the drawbacks of mordanting. Environmental impact. Some mordants, especially heavy metal mordants like chrome, copper and tin can have environmental implications if they are being done on commercial scale because larger quantities would be required. Improper disposal of modern baths can lead to water pollution. It is crucial to choose modern responsibly and practice eco-friendly disposal methods. So, if it is precipitated or if it is recycled and then reused, then it is ok. Then one can use copper chromium tin, but not otherwise or on the other hand, one can use it in minimal quantity so that there is no major environmental impact. Toxicity and safety concern. When we are dealing with metal salts, particularly heavy metal salts or transition metal salts, we have to be over conscious. Certain modern's, particularly those containing heavy metals can be toxic. Handling and disposing of these substances require caution to prevent health risk. Adequate protective measures such as gloves and masks should be taken when working with potentially hazardous models. So, as a basic rule, good laboratory practices have to be in place. You cannot handle 
these chemicals with your hand without using gloves. There are some more drawbacks, health risks for workers. The production and use of some mordants may pose health risk for those involved in dyeing processes such as textile workers. Adequate safety measures and ventilation are important to minimize exposure. So, if it is a well ventilated dye house, then the, there are no major his, uh, health risk for the workers. Otherwise, one has to take safety measures and ventilation very seriously. Limited range of color. While moderns offer versatility in color modification, some natural dyes may have limited color range and moderns may not significantly alter certain colors. The ability to achieve a broad spectrum of colors depends on both the dye and the moderns. And one example I would like to mention here is indigo. It is not a mordant driven dye or mordant associated dye. So, because it has very narrow color range, only the indigo blue that we see from that. It no hue color can, other hue color can be obtained by using mordants. It will always give blue. So, there we use another technique of reusing two dyes one over the other and there is a lecture dedicated on how we can modify and get more color range from indigo by using another dye and double dyeing the fabric. But that is a different uh, situation completely. Complexity of the process, modenting adds an extra step to the natural dyeing process, making it more time consuming and complex. This may be a drawback for those seeking a simpler or faster dyeing method. But you see, although it is a complex process, but it is a mandatory process because if we do not do modenting, then what will happen that the color fastness will not be there. So, are we ready to compromise the color fastness or color adherence? No. So, therefore, it is essential. The process involves one extra step of modenting, but that extra step of modenting which is not required in synthetic dyes is worth it, because we know that without modenting we cannot achieve the color and the luster or the hue on the naturally dyed fabric. Sometimes mordants can even change the or damage the fiber. So, we have to keep in mind that extended exposure to mordants particularly at high temperatures may weaken or damage the fiber. Over mordanting can lead to brittleness and reduce the overall strength and durability of the fiber. So, we have to keep that optimum time that is required for the mordanting only should be maintained. It is not that we just leave for in the modern solution for hours and do not worry about it. It can make, make it brittle and it will overall reduce the strength of the fabric. Uneven dyeing. If mordanting is not done evenly or if the fabric is not adequately prepared, it can lead to uneven dyeing. Certain areas of fabric may absorb more dye than others, resulting in a very patchy appearance and that looks very, very ugly. So, what I am trying to draw your attention that we have to use mordant in an optimal manner and in the desired recipe whatever has been mentioned as much time is mentioned if it is mentioned 1 percent for 1 hour that is what we have to stick to. Limited compatibility with some fibers. Certain moderns may not be suitable for all types of fibers. For example, 
some modems that work well with protein based fibers like wool and silk may not be effective on plant based fibers like cotton, linen and hevel. So, we have to remember and understand and very uh, you know logically plan the natural dyeing process. It cannot be done as though somebody is mixing something in a hobby club and you just want to see what is the effect. If you want to get the desired effect, then you have to follow the recipe word by word, step by step to get the best result. Complexity in scaling up. Sometimes when you have to do mordenting in large scale, it can become quite cumbersome. Mordenting processes that work well on a small scale may pose challenges when scaled up for industrial production. Consistency and efficiency become more critical factors in larger dyeing operations and of course, cost effectivity. Some moderns can be relatively expensive adding to the overall cost of the dyeing process. The cost consideration is particularly relevant in large scale dyeing operations and that is primarily why we are trying to promote that only small quantities are required. So, we are trying to promote that only small quantities of moderns are required. And so, despite of their drawbacks, proper understanding, careful selection of moderns and responsible practices can mitigate many of the potential challenges associated with modenting in natural dyeing. Always prioritize safety, environmental consciousness and ethical consideration in the choice of handling of moderns. Precautions to be taken when engaging in modern or modenting process for natural dyeing, it is essential to take precautions to ensure your safety, the safety of others and the environmental impact. Some important precautions to keep in mind, use protective gear that is wear appropriate personal protective equipment that is PPE including gloves, goggles and a mask, especially when handling potentially hazardous moderns. This helps minimize the risk of skin contact, eye irritation and inhalation. Work in a well ventilated area. Modenting processes can release fumes, especially when heated, when heating the modern solutions. Work in a well ventilated area to minimize exposure to fumes and ensure good air circulation. Avoid ingestion, do not eat, drink or smoke while mordenting. Wash your hands thoroughly after handling mordants to prevent accidental ingestion. Read and follow the safety data sheet that is the MSDS. Obtain and read the safety data sheets for the specific moderns you are using. The safety data sheet SDAS provides essential information on the chemical properties, hazards and safety precautions associated with the modern. Handle moderns with care. Be cautious when measuring, mixing and handling moderns. Follow recommended guidelines for dilution and handling procedures to prevent spills and accidents. Prevent contamination. Use dedicated equipment for mordenting to avoid cross contamination with food or other items. Label container cle containers clearly and store moderns in secure place will help in handling with care. Dispose of waste responsibly. Disposal of modern solution and waste according to local regulations. Do not pour down 
the drain or into water bodies as certain modens can be harmful to the aquatic environment. Consider neutralizing or detoxifying waste before disposal. Educate yourself. Learn about the specific modent you are using from the SDS data, their properties and potential risk. Understanding the characteristic of these modents help us to take appropriate precautions. Keep emergency supplies on hand. Have access to emergency supplies such as eye wash, stations, first aid kits and spill containment materials in case of accidents. Supervise and educate others. If working in a group or educational setting, ensure that everyone involved is aware of safety precautions and procedures. Beginners should do under supervision of an expert and provide proper training on safe practices. Be mindful of fabric types. Different fibers may react differently to moderns. Be aware of the specific requirement and compatibility of the modern with the type of fabric you are dyeing. Monitor and control temperature. When heating modern solution, use appropriate temperature control to avoid overheating and potential damage to fiber. Follow recommended temperature during the modenting process very strictly. Taking these precautions helps create a safer and more responsible modenting process ensuring that you achieve your desired results while minimizing risk to yourself, others and environment. Methods of modenting. We can just now recapitulate that what we have learnt. We have learnt about modenting and the three types of modenting methods are pre-modenting, post-modenting and simultaneous modenting method. So, pre-modenting this is the process of modenting before natural dyeing the fabric in separate bath. This has been elaborately discussed earlier. Post modenting. This is a process of modenting after natural dyeing. Usually, this is done soon after dyeing of the yarn or fabric. This has also been discussed elaborately earlier. Simultaneous modenting. This is a process of modenting together natural dyeing in the same bath. Along with the natural dye, the mordant is added and it becomes a common bath of mordanting and dye bath. And this also has been discussed quite in details. Preparation for the fabric for dyeing. Grey yarn or cloth or as such is not suitable for dyeing or wet processing as it contains natural impurities, fats, waxes coloring matter, broken seeds, etc. It needs to be washed with mild detergent to remove these impurities. However, in the ancient days, the grey fabrics were processed with cow dung or camel dung or goat dung solution to make it more absorbent and bright. That is because, you know, they were using accidentally these cow dung, camel dung, which can and such things which can be thought of having rich ammonical solution. So, in a way they did not understand the chemistry of that, but they were trying to do some kind of a catenizing agency, agent treatment by using cow dung, camel dung, cow urine and such things. So, accidental chemistry is also chemistry there is inherent some chemical reaction which at that time was not understood, but nevertheless it still remains a chemistry. And they thought that giving a pretreatment with these will make the color brighter and it did so. 
but there is a lot of chemistry and chemical reaction behind this usage because of which they got these results. However, they did not understand this at that time, but nevertheless the grey yarn and cloth must be washed which is called the scouring process with the help of a mild detergent. Modifier and pH. Modifiers and pH as we learned a while ago, any bath used with main dyeing process to change the color, it may contain a mordant or may be even very acidic or alkaline. So, sometimes some chemicals have to be added additionally like the case of in the case where we added cream of tartar or oxalic acid or vinegar or washing soda. These are like modifiers, they control the pH and pH plays a very very vital role and it has been emphasized even earlier that pH can change the color content from one shade to another shade completely. The pH of the liquid can be taken using litmus paper and is usually expressed on the scale of 0 to 14 of which 7 is neutral and we know that. Number less than 7 are acidic and numbers greater than 7 are alkaline or basic. Safety measurements are required in natural dyeing. Because dyeing substances and mordants can be poisonous, there are some important rules that need to be remembered and kept in mind. Dyeing should be never done in cooking vessels. All measuring and stirring spoons, scales, thermometers, jars, etc. should be separately used for dyeing purposes. They cannot be used from kitchen kitchen utensils. The work area should be covered, wearing gloves to avoid contact with skin is necessary, dye should be kept in well ventilated area or outdoors, rinsing fibers thoroughly after dyeing to remove all excess chemical is essential. Do not inhale steam from dye baths. If you experience any itching, burning, rash or other reaction, get away from the dye bath. So, these are certain safety measures which also need to be absorbed, understood and very carefully otherwise accidents can happen anywhere. It is not dangerous to use natural dyeing, but it is advisable to use it in a more systematic manner with full consciousness what is right and what is not right. Because when we are doing any chemical experiment in laboratory, we have to be fully cautious of what we are doing. We have to be fully aware and that is why there was this mention of reading the material safety data sheet MSDS or SDS. Because when we know the potential hazards of a chemical, whether it is a mordant, whether it is any modifier, whether it is an auxiliary, then only we can take the precaution. So, in summary what I can say that disposal of dyes and mordants are also very important. Disposal of dyes and mordants also must be taken and done carefully. It is not that use it and just throw it anywhere and everywhere, because then you are contaminating the environment and on one hand we are saying natural dyes are good, they are eco friendly and they on the other hand we are using mordants and then by improper, improper disposal of the mordant we are creating environmental negative impact. Always dilute baths before pouring them out. Modern baths and are extremely either alkaline or acidic bath must be diluted heavily before disposal. 
Natural dyes from the plants can usually be poured out into the ground without ill effect on surrounding vegetation, but mordants uh, and are very alkaline or acidic water can change plants and can damage plants. Never pour baths into ponds or running water, pour them as far as away possible in compost heaps. The exception would be if your bath contains something you would be added to the soil anyway, a bath of lime and madder, no modern could be poured into acidic soil. So, one has to keep the chemical content in mind before the disposal of these dyes. So, to sum up I would say that in totality the dyes are to be used natural dyes and for that mordanting is required whether it is cotton or silk or wool. All these three natural fibers and even linen, hemp and other jute fiber which are from the plant origin need to be mordanted in order to have a better dye uptake. Unless and until we do a good mordanting with understanding not over indulging in mordanting, but doing it in the optimum and standardized manner, this will not give the desired result. And therefore, we can adapt for every dye we need to find out which method of mordanting is most appropriate, whether it is pre mordanting or post mordanting or simultaneous mordanting and that particular step we should follow. In order to understand that these steps are very subjective to a particular dye, we can carry out that process very carefully. We have seen the advantages, enormous advantages that mordanting brings. We have also seen some of the drawbacks that mordants carry with them. However, the drawbacks can be overcome, the challenges can be taken care of if we are doing the experiment very carefully and consciously. What is required is that we have to do these experiments very carefully. No provision is allowed for disposing the modern solution into the atmosphere without detoxifying it, without precipitating it. And the bottom line still remains that use as little modern's as required because that can only help in mitigating the adverse environmental impact. So, if I have to sum up today's lecture, I will say that mordanting in natural dyeing is a must. Mordanting in optimization is what is required, whether it is mordanting of cotton silk or wool, all three natural fibers which are popularly used with natural dyes have to be mordanted in order to get the best results from the dyeing. And when we try to understand this, then only we will be able to understand that only in the case of cotton, we need a pretreatment with tannic acid, which is also a mordant in a way, but after tannic acid treatment also we need a step which is the mordanting step for cotton. And we understood the importance of all these steps very carefully because we understood that cotton has a special treatise and cotton is the toughest to dye. Repeatedly I had told in this lecture in the beginning and in the middle 
that if we are able to dye cotton with natural dyes, we have won the battle. Because silk and wool are more receptive to natural dyeing as compared to cotton, but even cotton dyeing is possible and therefore, we know that it is not something that cannot be done. Only thing is that we have to understand that cotton dyeing is requiring one more step as compared to the silk and wool dyeing. We will need to do all the cleaning of the impurities, uh, the scouring process remains common to cotton, silk and wool. But when it comes to starting the pretreatment, we need to do a tannic acid pretreatment for cotton followed by mordanting. Whereas in silk and wool, we just do directly after scouring we go to uh, mordanting and after mordanting we go to directly to dyeing. We also saw the role of cationic agent which is also a kind of a treatment auxiliary mordant whatever you want to name it and its contribution in the color enhancement, light fastness, betterment of light fastness and wash fastness. So, with this we have come to an end of this lecture, safe disposal is of course, very significant and we have discussed about it. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone wiet and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and 
confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, It was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.